Okay, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Bootcast. Joining me today is Mr. Adam O'Kialig. Adam, thanks for coming on the show. Cheers for having me, Eugene. No problem at all. So Adam, tell us a bit about yourself, where, where you're from and what you're, what you're at with yourself. Well, I'm, uh, I'm from Dorky in Dublin. I'm uh, 17 and I suppose I'm a, I'm a lifelong scout. And that's sort of that's what's gotten me into my adventuring and sort of keeping my uh, my travel blog, sort of scout blog on Instagram, Irish Outdoorsman. Brilliant. Cool. So was was this something that you were always into or did you just kind of develop a, a passion for it later in, in your teens? Or? A passion for capturing video or photos? or Well, just for being outdoors and like... Being outdoors. Were you always well, in... I've I've been in the scouts since I was six years old, so we're looking right. at eleven, going on twelve years now in April. Right. But uh, yeah, I suppose it's it's gotten pretty serious now with the outdoors since probably thirteen or fourteen. So the past couple of years, anyway, I've gotten more into the hiking or the kayaking or yeah. sort of just going off on little adventures. Definitely the past few years, anyway. Brilliant. Um, from Dorky, and so you must be doing the leaving cert then, or. Yeah, doing the leaving cert. I, I was just sitting, just set my uh, business mock there this morning. Oh, jeez. How did it go? It was, it was a nice paper. It was a nice paper, <laughs> but we'll, we'll wait to see how the, how the result comes back. Jeez, best of luck with them anyway. God, fair play. The, for anyone who's watching or listening, the, the leaving cert is like the, the secondary school uh, state examinations in, in Ireland. Um, and then there's obviously the mocks are the, the fake ones, the preparation for that. Um, so I suppose just in the pre-interview, Adam, I, I sent on a couple of kind of questions to, to kind of get an idea about you and your, your different stories and all of your adventures and pursuits. So I suppose what would be your, your favorite story to tell? Uh, well, really, there's so many, I suppose. But um, I know uh, Venture Challenge was a, it's a it's an adventure challenge, I suppose, for the scouting age group of uh, 15 to 17. And I did it last summer. And uh, what it basically consists of is uh, teams of two going off and being dropped somewhere random in Ireland. <laughs> and they have to walk for over 100 kilometers with a limited budget of 20 euro for five days. Jeez. And you go around and you sort of, you have to, nothing's pre-planned or anything. You're just dropped off and you're given the yeah. end destination and you have to get there. And you go up to people's doors and you knock on their house and ask them to stay, ask for sort of sandwiches or yeah. dinner or whatever, and <laughs> keep a logbook along the way, do some projects, sort of find yeah. out a bit more about the local area. That was, yeah, that, I did that last summer and that was really one of the, the maddest things that I've ever done. Jeez. Brilliant that's, experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, I'm guessing that, like, you'd be of a younger generation than me and, like, we we all kind of take stuff for granted and yeah, um, you know, like 20, 20 euros for five days, 20 euros for five days. Well, that, <laughs> that here's actually the funny thing about it. You think when you actually look at it, it's kind of, it's kind of okay. It's, it's doable <laughs> as long as you get a little or an Aldi, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the good thing, myself and my partner, Leo, we actually got very lucky. And uh, on the first night we sort of, we bumped into, we were walking through Thurlis in Tipperary and, uh, we found the local scout troop. So one of their leaders, they put us up in the house for the night and they gave us uh, a dinner and they gave us breakfast the next morning. And then they knew, they knew someone in the next town who gave us dinner and gave us breakfast the next morning. And they knew someone in the next town who gave us dinner and breakfast again. So actually we didn't spend any of our budget until the last day where we, uh, we, got, we got takeaway. So <laughs> <laughs> Nice little treat. Yeah, definitely. And, and what did you kind of learn about yourself? Like a lot of 17 year olds or even 20 something year olds wouldn't kind of have to have the balls to do something like that or yeah, wouldn't, certainly. wouldn't be able to. And like we said that we take so many things for granted and just society today and like materialism and yeah, like yeah, yeah, so yeah. for granted. What, what did you kind of learn about yourself from, from that venture? One, yeah. One of the, I suppose I would always, I would have always had the sort of confidence to do it. And especially my partner, Leo, he was, he was very confident in, in himself and in our team. But uh, 
one of the one of the main things that I learned from that was it wasn't really about myself or the team. It was about the people that we sort of came across along the journey and uh, just how generous everybody is with uh, sort of like being put up in the house for uh, for the first night and getting dinner and getting breakfast. And then the next night, same deal again. That was just that was just so amazing. And there was actually one time uh, you had to do a training weekend for this venture challenge to make sure that you were capable and you knew what you were doing. So yeah. this was over Easter. And uh, we walked into a small little town called Glasson in uh, West Mead. And so we knocked on a few doors and nobody was home. But then we ended up in getting this one house and they brought us in and uh, they gave us dinner and everything. And it was Good Friday, so they, they had no meat or anything. So we got, <laughs> we got two fried eggs chips and beans and brilliant dinner but anyway we we had to go into the house and uh, ask them a few questions for our projects that we had to complete mm. and it turned out that uh, the guy who owned the house knew my uncle who lived in Drumshambo and Leitrim which is sort of 80 kilometers away and he was actually he was actually at the funerals of my both my grandparents right and sort of what is it what are the chances of this yeah, Jesus. kind of thing just rocking up in this random house in Westmeath and then having a family connection so that was just one of the one of the crazy things that happened and it sort of just showed that there's always people there yeah that would be have some connection to you in some way yeah brilliant um so it kind of builds i suppose your confidence and re- your resilience really and yeah i suppose uh trust trust in people more and definitely definitely just, um, relying one on your the, on your wits yeah one of the uh it certainly built my trust in people a lot and sort of I realized that if you ask for something out nine times out of ten people will do it for you because just generosity is just unbelievable and uh there is a there is a sort of a stage up from the venture challenge called the explorer belt Mm. which is 200 kilometers over 10 days in Europe right and for that I'd almost consider not bringing a tent to be honest because yeah People let us in the house every night and I, don't, yeah. I wouldn't bring a stove because people were giving us dinner. And sort of the main thing about that is just, yeah, you just have to ask for it. Yeah. And be polite about it and then people will be yeah. sound enough to give it to you. Ask and you shall receive. That's it. That um, is it. Brilliant. Um, I'm not sure if you listened to some of the previous episodes, but uh, two, two episodes ago we had uh, Andy Torbett. Yeah, yeah, cool guy. Cool yeah, guy. really amazing guy. Like, uh, he's done, you know, crazy stuff, exploration yeah, stuff, expeditions, skydiving, deep sea diving, stuntman work. Like, you name oh, it, really. You, <laughs> yeah, but would would you see yourself? Um, like, is would it be a goal of yours to kind of go down a, a pursuit like that? Um, as your as your career or your your life purpose, I suppose. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely. I really like. Sort of one one of the guys that I really like watching on uh, TV or YouTube would be Steve mm. Backshaw, okay. the uh, yeah British adventure, and he had a he had a series out there. Uh, I just, the name of it escapes me, but he was up in Gre- in Greenland climbing unclimbed peaks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that was just that just looked amazing. But uh, definitely for definitely for a few years anyway, I'd like to I'd like to be in outdoor pursuits. But, yeah. Definitely go for it. Um, what What are your plans for after the the leaving cert? Besides a party <laughs> <laughs> after the leaving cert, yeah, take a take a few months break anyway. But um, I'd like to do geography and politics next year. Oh, that's yeah, that's the plan, and sort of the the idea behind geography would have always been to. I, I do love geography and sort of the physical aspect of it being out in the nature and everything, but sort of I think. A degree in geography could potentially lead me down an outdoors pursuits path, which would be amazing. Yeah, amazing. definitely. Go for it. Um, and so a lot, a lot of, of what you do and with the scouts and like like the venture challenge, it's it's all kind of out in the open and it's some of it is very physical. But could you could you mm. name one time that you really struggled mentally with something in in life and how did you how did you overcome it? Yeah, well, I suppose recently I suppose I I've lost all my grandparents, but they were kind of I that that did affect me. But one loss I suppose that really affected me mentally was um, 
my when my friend passed away there in December. God. Um, Cormac O'Brien on. He was uh, he was a scout as well, and he was he was two years older than me, mm. and he was just he was I suppose one of my role models and sort of inspirations. Yeah. Just he was, I suppose he was the he was the perfect perfect human being really. God, he was uh, nice to everybody, sort of brilliant, brilliant in school, brilliant at football, brilliant in scouts and in so many aspects, seriously involved in the labor youth movement. And I suppose he was, life was just stripped from him at, nine, at 19 years old. And I suppose that, that did really hit me hard, but we, we, had his, we had his funeral, but it was a humanist funeral in the, uh, was it Mansion House? It's it's the mm. the road across from Dal Aaron, and uh, El, so many scouts turned up. Like there was probably about fifty people there that I knew, mm. and that was just I suppose that that's the thing that sort of got me through that. That was really that was a really amazing to see just sort of the the support there from from scouts, and the, oh, there must have been over five hundred people in the in the building and crowds outside unbelievable amounts and sort of just that support there that everyone's there and everyone's sort of mm, community there for, the, there for the same reason yeah and they all yeah, yeah. appreciated what he had done in his short life and yeah that was just yeah i suppose it's the support of friends and family that that gets you through things really very good um and just on the flip side then, like what would you call the, the biggest physical challenge that you've ever done and what, what did you learn about yourself from that? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's a lot. I, I suppose I've done a lot of things physical, but none have been sort of just amazing sort of climb huge mountains or whatever. But I did, I did this one thing there a few years back, 2018 actually with my friend Grania. We, um, we took the train down to Leitrim and then, then we walked 20 kilometers to Drumshambo, which is where my family's from in Leitrim. And uh, in Drumshambo, there's one of the biggest lakes in Ireland, I suppose, Loch Allen. And on Loch Allen is this island called O'Connor's Island, which is just an, it's an amazing island. It used to be owned by, uh, by one of the families that ran the local coal mine in Arigna. And these were the wealthiest guys in the area. And they, they had houses on it. They had a... Uh, uh, their own church they had a boathouse they had a pier it was, it's just an amazing island and it's it's sort of come to ruins recently but mm. I always had a sort of a dream to to camp on it I suppose uh Class. so in tw- so in 2018 yeah myself and Grania we we went down we walked 20 kilometers out to Drumshambo and uh we camped on it for two nights but the biggest physical challenge I suppose of this was uh actually rowing out to the island <laughs> So, so the island is about a kilometer out from uh, where we got the boat. And yeah. So it was, grand, it was grand the first day. We, we rode out. We camped on the island overnight. Then we rode back in because we were, we were picking up bikes and we were going to cycle around the lake, which is 56 kilometers. Right. So then we did that. That took us probably longer than it should have, probably <laughs> six or seven hours. But uh, we got back in. We rode out to the island. And then when we were rowing out to the island, it was sort of like the, the weather was changing a bit. And we, mm. uh, so we camped there that night. It was raining and it was windy. It was all the rest. So then we were, we were rowing back in in the morning. And of course, it took awful weather. The wind was going against us. Drawing you wasn't rowing. <laughs> and uh, it, it probably, it, I think it took us about 50 minutes to get in. For, for a kilometer in, a yeah. kilometer row, Jeez. and it that was, I suppose, the one lesson that I learned from that was uh, never sort of bring it, bring an engine, really, bring an engine. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. probably the simplest, simplest plan, really. Yeah, jeez, and and so was, did you have to bring the bikes out on out to the out island? On, no, not out. So oh, we, sorry. We so pick, we, yeah, no, we yeah. just picked them up, right, uh, right, sort of in the little dock where we where we were rowing out from. Ah, but. sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> have you, have you done much international travel or? Yeah, I've actually, I've actually been really lucky in, I suppose with, with scouts, mainly international travel, but also with family and all the rest. But I suppose with scouts in, in 2017, my, 
I, I sort of had my first big international trip and that was uh I was selected with uh seven other people mm. to go over to America to oh, yeah. uh to the national campsite to go to their national jamboree and then now this was uh two years before the world scout jamboree was going to be held there yeah and uh we basically had to suss out the site and sort of see see what it's going to be like and then come back to ireland and promote what's going to go on at this jamboree and try to get cool. as many people to go yeah, to yeah. the world jamboree as possible so that was i was i was very lucky to get picked for that trip in 2017 we got to go to washington we got to spend i think 10 days in west virginia on a campsite and then nice. also two days in a small town america really yeah the yeah. Uh, population of the town was 80 people and we got to go to the the local fair so like when we got there we increased the population by 10 percent kind of thing (laughs) mad really but uh yeah that that was amazing sort of experience the yeah the sort of small small town america and we got to go to the county fair where there was beauty pageants and there was who has who was the biggest turn up kind of thing (laughs) it was it was brilliant it was brilliant class class who was the biggest turn up Um, yeah What would be your, your top tip for somebody on the fence about maybe traveling or, or doing a, a new pursuit? Uh, yeah. Hes- hesitant I, about, you know? I suppose, obviously, you can be worried that it's not going to go right or it's going to be crappy weather or you're going to have not enough gear or you're going to be cold or it's not going to be worth it or you're going to be on your own. There's so many different things that you can be worried about, but really you just have to you just have to go do it and then when when you're doing it you'll really you'll realize that none of those things actually matter <laughs> yeah. when, when you're when you're out there they yeah. really don't obviously obviously being cold up a mountain isn't great but <laughs> but really like you put it past you you realize what you're doing is actually amazing and then you'll once you do the first thing really then you'll go and do so many more of them yeah like that yeah. that's what i've found myself i've you do one thing it's an, and it's a snowball effect kind of yeah. just they just get bigger and they come more often really good yeah. solid solid advice um do you read many books or books you think besides school that, books that, <laughs> yeah too many school books recently not enough time for reading but i definitely don't read as much as i should as much as i should i i try i try to read but you just you lose, I I lose sort of interest or motivation very quickly, I suppose, in that and sort of long yeah. school days and all the rest. But I suppose one book that I uh, that I read recently uh, was uh, Robin Hood, actually. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah, Robin Hood. I got I got it out from the uh, the local library yeah. when I was uh, when I was in sixth class, actually. So that was six years ago, and never brought it back. But, <laughs> So the fine, the fine must be huge on it now. <laughs> yeah. We'll edit this out. <laughs> yeah, please. please. <laughs> I'd have the council contact me knocking on the door. But... So I, I found that anyway on my bookshelf in probably October. And I remember it. It was always, it was my favorite book for probably six years. And after reading it in sixth class, because it, when I was 12 or 11, and it really just, it captivated my, my imagination, captured it. Because Sir Robin Hood, he was he was living out in the forest, and he yeah, was yeah, yeah. he was jumping over rivers and climbing trees and yeah. running away from the law. Now it, that, <laughs> it doesn't necessarily interest me, but yeah, the cli- the climbing trees and sort of living out in the forest just it it's just it's it's sort of the picture of it in the book is drawn so so brilliantly, and you get to see the sort of the tall oak trees and sort of the the little uh cave, all the caves that they have and all the leaves on the ground are it, it's just it's an amazing book for sort of capturing your imagination about living out in the in the wild in and the that, wild th- that isn't necessarily what it's meant to do but yeah that's what it did for me very good um that yeah, was brilliant uh, any other ones any other ones well i have angels and demons as well oh yeah I, uh, D- dan brown yeah Dan Brown. Yeah, Dan Brown I haven't read it. I, I have it at home, but I, <laughs> I need to read it. Well, well worth the read. Well worth the read. It's sort of, 
I suppose it's one of those. Uh, it's it's I, just, I wouldn't even know what genre it's in, but it's an interesting one. It's about sort of all real, sort of everything in it is real, but you think it's like, is it actually? <laughs> so they were talking yeah. about at the start there it's in CERN, situated in CERN, which is the uh oh, yeah. the European Hadron scientific Glider place, uh, yeah, Hadron yeah, yeah. Glider, exactly. And that that was just that sounds brilliant. That sounds amazing, sort of. But uh yeah, brilliant, brilliant book and sort of keeps you on your toes the whole time, really. And uh well, I don't know, some I remember I was talking to my friend about it and he said it didn't, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but it, it kept me it kept me interested until yeah. the end anyway. And sort of Dan Brown's also done like Da Vinci Code and yeah, yeah. He's done a number of them and they're yeah. movies now, I think, as well. So. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I must read that. Um might watch the movie over the next few days, actually. <laughs> the movies yeah. are never as good. <laughs> no, that that is true. Yeah, you build up an idea in your head yeah. and your imagination of how it's Definitely. meant to be, and then somebody goes yeah, and makes a exactly. movie about it and ruins it. Exactly. I actually had a book that I was reading at the start of last summer called uh, 47 Ronin, which is about a Ronin is a basically a, a samurai in Japan that uh, sort of disobeys his master or uh, breaks away from samurai code. And uh, so I was reading this book and I was so interested because I remember seeing a, a movie that my dad showed me called Ronan. Oh, yeah. The car chase yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> so I was reading this book the whole time, sort of expecting that I'll be able to watch a movie at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> and then turns out I finished the book and it was about car chases and, so, and spies and all the rest. But yeah, definitely not Japanese samurai sort of <laughs> killing each other. And I was disappointed. Anyway. <laughs> Jesus. Um, do you have any favorite quote? Yeah, I, I would have. My favorite quote would be uh, by Samuel Beckett. It's ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again, fail again, fail better. And I remember my dad gave that to me when I was in third year and I got in a, I was in a bit of trouble in school and sort of exams didn't go great at Christmas on my junior cert. And it was, it was just to show me that doesn't matter really what you do this time as long as you give it a go the next time and even if you have to fail better you're still you're still doing it better so yeah good stuff yeah. well done no it's um, a nice one surely is ever tried ever failed no matter try again fail again fail better Samuel yeah Beckett. it's a good one could you name two people that inspire you yeah so I was, I was looking at this question and really I think Two people that inspire me are uh, would be two of my friends, uh, my friend Caleb and my friend Aaron. I know, so these people aren't necessarily sort of world leaders just yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I think that's really important. I suppose to have someone your age, that's your peer, mm -hmm. that's your friend, that inspires you as well, because that's that's the thing that'll push you on to be better yourself. Yeah. But, uh, no, these these two guys are. They're great. They're really sort of top of what it, whatever they touch turns to gold, really, sort of. They'd be brilliant academically, brilliant, brilliant scouts, brilliant sort of sport, sports persons, uh, sort of really amazing. Okay, they're both really driven in whatever they do. They sort of put their mind to it and and go get it done, really. And that's that's sort of that would drive me on to sort of try, try do what they do really. Cause yeah. they do, they do amazing things and it's just cause they, they put so much, so much of their self into it. Yeah. And I suppose that's what I try to take out of them and go do it myself. Brilliant. That's it. That's interesting because, you know, sometimes when I ask people that question, they, they come back with a, like a really high profile, a famous yeah. person and they, and, it's interesting to hear like someone from like a younger generation to to not um be kind of too too influenced by someone else you know like we're yeah. in an age of influencers and yeah, everybody on instagram and tiktok is a celebrity now and mm. like we can kind of hold ourselves kind of put ourselves under pressure to live up to yeah. this ideal person but it's interesting Definitely. for so you see what i found find about them is that sure 
Aaron's only six months older than me and Caleb's six months younger than me. So they'd be like, they're my age and mm. they're going out doing these things and they're sort of, yeah, as I said, they're top of their game and everything they do and yeah. sort of they're, they're my age and they're able to do that. So why Super. should I be as well? Yeah. The unsung heroes. Brilliant. That's it. Um, okay. It's been brilliant talking to you, Adam. So just before we wrap up um, and kind of, finish off what's what's the best way for people to follow your own journey or reach out to you or show support i know you're on instagram yes i suppose i am on instagram but it's 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 gotten fairly sort of sparse recently but hopefully i'll go out and do some more adventures again this summer but it's irish outdoorsman on instagram that's sort of that's where i do post post a few of my pictures anyway yeah brilliant and um is there any other platform or website or no other platform just nice just and yet. simple yeah nice and simple <laughs> good Dilute stuff market of it yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah well adam okay thanks a million for coming on the bootcast best of luck thanks. with the leave insert and yeah. all future <laughs> endeavors and remember to follow your passion and become the journey that's it thank you very much no problem cheers adam bye bye